Science in pajamas. One last video for today. All right, so we're going to talk briefly about um, was, sorry, RNA processing. So we know that when RNA gets transcribed from the DNA, so when we take the DNA and we do transcription, which is making the messenger RNA, it doesn't go straight out into the cytoplasm after it's done. It has to be processed. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. How is it that the RNA, the messenger RNA, is processed before it is ready to leave the nucleus and go out into the cytoplasm in order to be translated? So, wow, Ripley, got a crazy little dog here. Yeah. Yeah, you, you want to see this little boy? Yeah, that's his back paw. Or that's his front paw, sorry. Yeah, this is what I'm dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. Alright, but he's cute, so we'll allow it. So, when you have... Hi, yes, hi. When you have the RNA, I'm going to split it up into sections. So, do, 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 do. Let's call this section A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, the RNA has these things called introns and exons. Exons are the portions that are going to be left in so that we can use that when, during translation. So, in other words, exons are the part that will encode for the gene. And introns are the parts that will be cut out before it is translated. So that's what these represent, different introns and exons. Now, before we even deal with that, we're going to add a modified nucleotide cap to one end. So that's on the front of the mRNA. And then on the back, we're going to add a poly A tail. So it's a bunch of adenines added to the end. So we have a modified nucleotide cap on the front, poly A tail on the back. Now we're going to splice out some of the introns. And how that works is we have different associated machinery like spliceosomes, which will come in and cut out the introns. So for instance, if this is an intron and that's an intron, and that's an intron, they're going to be cut out. So we will then be left with do, 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 cap. We have A, C, F, and there's a tail. Now we just can't leave gaps in the RNA like that, so what happens is everything gets smushed together. We have modified nucleotide cap, A, C, F, and then our poly A tail. So now that it's been all processed, it's finished, this is the mRNA that will go out into the, um, what was it called? Sorry, the <laughs> cytoplasm. It will leave the nucleus, it will go out into the cytoplasm, be picked up by a ribosome, and will go through the process of, um, sorry, translation and then protein folding. Now, here's a cool thing. Only about one and a half to two percent of your entire DNA codes for proteins, which is incredible considering how much proteins do. I mean, I'm pretty sure I said this before, but they are what will run everything in our body. They build tissues, they make antibodies, they're neurotransmitters, they're enzymes. I mean, they are incredible little buggers. So the question is, how can we make over 22,000 different proteins when less than 2% of our DNA actually codes for them? 
most of our DNA, about 98 to 98.5%, doesn't code for proteins. It's non-encoding sections. So what happens is that our DNA is very economical, meaning it makes the most out of what it has. So take this portion, for instance. We can have, this might make a particular enzyme. Maybe this makes polymerase. Who knows? Maybe it makes DNA polymerase. So that is a distinct protein with its own function. It's an enzyme that helps during DNA replication. Well, we can have this thing called differential intron splicing. And what that means is we start off with the same RNA section, you know, all this, we have the modified cap and the poly A tail, but we take, we consider different sections of it introns and we cut out different sections. So when we want to make a digestive enzyme, so let's see, maybe I want to make a digestive enzyme for the stomach. I'm going to start off with the same sequence, but instead of considering B, D, and E, the introns, maybe B, C, and F are considered introns, which means those are the three that will get cut out, so we'll be left with A, B, and E. And then we still have the cap and the tail. It came from the same set, same original sequence, but it has now a different structure to it. What I mean by that is we have different sections that are left in. Now each one of these sections can be any number of bases long. And when we change what bases are present, then that will change what the amino acid order will be, and that will change the protein because now we have different amino acids, which means that they're going, when it's folded up into an actual protein, it's going to fold up differently, which means it's going to have a different function. So that's one way that our DNA is economical, by differential intron splicing. We can also have what's called exon shuffling. So maybe... Maybe we cut out the same parts we did before. So what was that? So originally we had B, D, and E be the introns. In exon shuffling, we cut out the same parts. The same things are considered introns, but instead of just pushing everything back together, it gets rearranged. Like when you shuffle a deck of cards, you rearrange the order of the cards. So instead of A, C, F, maybe we have C, A, F. So that means that once again, we've changed the order of the amino acid, or sorry, the order of the bases, which means we are going to change the amino acids, which means we're going to change how the amino acid chain can come together and fold, which means we're going to change the protein and its function. So that is called exon shuffling. Oh, yeah. Another thing we can do is called trans splicing or trans intron splicing. Now what that looks at is maybe you have two different mRNA sequences that can actually come together. So we have this sequence up here and then we have another sequence here. Let's see. Da, 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 da. We'll call this M, N, O, P, Q. So those are the sequences, the exons and the introns. We still have the modified cap and the poly A tail. And on this one, we're going to consider the Q, the M, and the O 
as introns. So what that means is that we are going to be left with A, C, F from the first one, and we're going to be left with M, sorry, N, and P on the second one. Then we push them all together. A, C, F, and then we have N, P. We have our cap, we have our tail, and once again, new amino acid sequence means that we're sorry new base sequence means we're gonna have new amino acid sequence which means that we are going to have a different protein with a different function so these are different ways that we can process the rna in order to make more proteins from such a small amount of dna again remember at most 2% of your DNA codes for proteins, and proteins run everything in your body. So we have these different ways to utilize the information in order to make more protein. So I hope that helps explain RNA processing. And until next time, stay healthy and stay